Hey guys, Irene here, happy new year and welcome back to my YouTube channel after a little holiday break. Today I have another compilation of photo shoots that didn't make it to YouTube for one reason or another. I have done two videos like this in the past and it seems like you guys really love them. I love them as well because I get to show you guys that no matter the experience or quality of your work, you will have those days where you just suck. And it's totally normal, it's a part of the process and we can always learn and become better from it. The first photo shoot I did back in 2017 on my trip to LA with a beautiful model Savannah. We were shooting in the park and I saw this tree with one big branch that was really low. So I obviously asked her to climb it and sit on the branch. When she started posing, I thought that she looked like a woodland fairy. So I decided I wanted to make her look really small against this big tree. So for the final image, I used the Brennizer method where you take multiple pictures all around your subject and then stitch them together in Photoshop to create the illusion of shallow depth of field. This image was constructed with maybe six different ones. The rest of the images from the shoot didn't really work for me because to be honest, I didn't prepare well enough for it. I didn't have a specific idea or concept. I thought we can just take some pretty portraits in the park and that just almost never works for me. Nowadays, I don't make that mistake anymore and I take a lot of time to prepare for my shoots. I choose the perfect outfit and match the location. And most importantly, I want to tell a story through my images. So once again, after this photo shoot, I realized that preparation is very very important for me. The next one I shot fairly recently with Nikita. I was extremely inspired by these two images, so I wanted to try to shoot them in my living room. I bought the inflatable pool, red fabric, some fake lily pads from Amazon, and we went for it. I filled the pool with warm water and then we covered the bottom blue part of it with this fabric backdrop. To keep Nikita warm, we cranked up the heat in the room and we also had boiling water on hand so whenever the water was getting colder we would fill it up with some hot water to keep it a nice temperature. I decided to use continuous light for this shoot as I wanted to see exactly what the light is looking like when I'm shifting the position of the model or of the light stand. I quickly realized that without moving the pool I'm not getting any of the drama of the water. I need to create ripples so here I'm just kicking the pool on the side to create that ripple effect and it was really hard to shoot at the same time. I honestly did not think this through well enough before I started doing this shoot and planning for it. For the second look, I chose a white nightgown. I swapped the backdrop we were using before for this dark brown one. I added the fake lily pads and finally, I also decided to use my Godox RGB light to give the whole scene a little bit of that green color. Uh, I just thought that it gave it like the swampy look that I wanted. This time, I got my husband to shake the pool so that I could focus on just taking the pictures. But if you do not have an assistant or someone to help you out doing this, it is very hard to do it on your own. This was my very first time trying out a concept like this and with that there's always a risk of it not coming out exactly how you want it. But what I'm gonna do is just take all of the experience that I've gained from this shoot and apply it to when I decide to redo this concept. I think it's gonna be the best idea to actually do this in the summertime in my backyard, where it's gonna be a lot easier to fill the pool with water and then drain it. I won't have to worry about the temperature of the water, especially if I shoot it on a nice hot summer day and finally, I think this will look a lot more like my personal style if I shoot it with natural light rather than using artificial lighting. So stay tuned for when I try to reshoot this in the summertime. 
This next one was actually supposed to be for my three photographers one concept series here on YouTube. The challenge was to do a self-portrait and incorporate concept water into this photo shoot. This was my initial idea inspired by this picture right here. I started off by making this light up cloud headpiece. I took a piece of cardboard, traced one of my straw hats on it, and then made a round hole in the middle for my head. I sacrificed one of my old pillow for the stuffing on the inside. This is what I'm gonna be making the cloud out of. Now I'm fluffing out the stuffing and placing it on the brim of the cardboard hat. I'm using just the hot glue gun to glue the stuffing to the cardboard and I'm doing it on both sides of the hat. Now I took my cloud hat outside and I sprayed it with some silver spray paint to give it that gloomy rainy look. Then I decided it would be a cool idea to make it glow, so I stuffed a bunch of Christmas lights inside of the cloud hat. The stuffing was thick enough to just hold it in without any glue. And finally, I attached a bunch of blue crystals hanging from the cloud that's supposed to represent little water droplets. I used a fishing net to attach them and uh, that made it look almost invisible. Uh, I think the final result looks really cool. What do you guys think? As usual, to take these self-portraits, I used Canon Connect app that lets you connect your camera to your phone and trigger it remotely, see what the camera sees on the screen on your phone, and even focus from your phone. So this is what the app looks like, and uh, this is how I took these self-portraits. I finished off the image in Photoshop with doing some manipulation to it. I added more water droplets, I changed some of the colors of the image, added slightly different backdrop, and then I also actually added some hair because I thought that it looked a little bit weird without it. In the end, I just kind of... I wasn't sure if I like this image or not. So let me know what you guys think. Do you like this image or do you not like it? I would really love to hear your thoughts on this particular image. Next up, we have a real throwback to 2016. I had an idea of taking the glass off of the picture frame, painting the sides of it with some acrylic paint, and then using it in front of my lens to create some interesting effects. I taped the glass to the tripod because at the time I didn't have any proper attachments for my tripods. I chose a similar looking backdrop and we took some simple portraits. This is the image that I edited in 2016. Right now my editing style has changed a lot, but I wanted to show you guys what I was creating then. I don't know why I didn't like it. Looking back at it, I think it's pretty cute. Here's another oldie from 2017. I shot this on my trip to Israel in Tel Aviv. The biggest challenge of this shoot was the bright sunlight. As a natural light photographer, I know that one of the most important things is to shoot at a proper time of the day. We shot this way too early, so it was very, very hard to work within this location. I was getting some super unflattering shadows, so here are just a few pictures I managed from this location. Finally, I kind of gave up on that and we moved to a shaded spot under the trees with some flowers and those were my favorites from the day. Nowadays, I only shoot few hours before sunset if I know that I'm going to be using just natural light. It's just the absolute best where you don't have to worry about any green grass reflecting onto the model's face or the crazy shadows. The time of the day is super, super important.
So this is it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if something doesn't go as well as you planned at your photo shoot, just remember that it happens to absolutely everyone. And that next time you're going to do much, much better. Give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.